Many Magic the Gathering players asked the question, is it worth it to buy Zendikar vs. Eldrazi, the new dual deck for Magic the Gathering? Produced twice each year, the dual decks have begun to be compared to Clash Packs a similar product that has two decks which can be played against each other. Dual decks have often fallen victim to their own oversaturation, in that they are meant to serve so many purposes that they often struggle to meet any of the demands. So how does Zendikar vs Eldrazi fare when evaluated as a product for new players? What about for experienced players? Is there any reason for them to purchase this product? Does it contain cards of interest to collectors? How about strictly from a financial perspective? What noteworthy reprints are included here? And finally, how about just in terms of fun? As always, knowing your needs and wants as a player will determine whether or not this dual deck is of value to you. Let's take a look. Zendikar vs Eldrazi contains the following. Let's start with financial value. As of the filming of this video, about one week after this product's release, if you were to purchase the individual cards from this dual deck, the total cost to you for the singles would be $28.61. Now the MSRP on this product is $19.99. But when we take a closer look at just what these individual cards are, we see that the two most expensive cards in the collection aren't even worth five dollars each. It That Betrays, formerly a $10 and up card, has dropped to $4 due to its reprinting here. And this isn't even a card that sees a lot, if any, constructed play. Oblivion Sower is currently a pre-order item from the upcoming Battle for Zendikar. The dual deck versions are currently going for about $4.63 on TCG Player, but after release, this is likely going to drop significantly. Beyond that, the only cards of value above $2 are Avenger of Zendikar at $3.68 and Primal Command, which, due to its reprinting here, has dropped to a lowly $2.50. And that's it. All other cards in this collection are worth less than $2 each. Most of them worth only pennies. And looking at these cards of quote-unquote value, this is a good segue to whether this dual deck contains cards that were in need of reprinting. Given that dual deck reprintings do cause a significant drop in price, it's a shame the command reprinted here wasn't, say, Cryptic Command, whose reprinting in Modern Masters had nearly no effect on price whatsoever. Along those same lines, Stirring Wildwood, a man land that sees very little play, could have been much more appealing if it had been a Celestial Colonnade or a Creeping Tar Pit instead. Or one of each, quite frankly. Unlike in many previous dual decks, Zendikar vs Eldrazi has nothing particularly noteworthy in terms of cards that needed a reprint. In fact, instead of containing a much needed rare or two, we are given instead things like four Bolt, an uncommon that was indeed in need of a reprint due to an oddly high price because of its success in Delver decks, and yes, is now much more affordable due to its reprint, but I would have rather seen some high-priced rares that desperately needed to go down. As far as playables and constructed formats, we are also given Groundswell, a green pump staple that wasn't too high to begin with due to its being a common, but at least now will be securely affordable. All in all, the large printing of dual decks will ensure these prices continue to drop. But because very few of these cards are even played outside of the dual decks themselves, in formats such as modern, that means this is underwhelming for financial value and for cards in need of reprints. And this also means experienced players are going to see little if any need for this product. What about for collectors? Zendikar vs Eldrazi features some alternate art as usual, but again, following off of a previous point, these are far from prizes for constructed formats or 
or even for Commander. For collectors, getting alternate art cards that actually see play is far more valuable than seldom used cards such as these. And so this too disappoints. What about for new or casual players to just play these decks against each other and have fun? Well, fun itself is highly subjective, and again, this is where personal assessment plays an enormous factor. In my own playtesting, as well as speaking with many others who have purchased this product, the decks do not appear to be ideally balanced. The Eldrazi deck has a tendency to overwhelm the Zendikar deck, thematically fitting perhaps, but not as balanced as we might prefer. Again, this is highly subjective. But here's something that's not. Something unexpected has happened to dual decks. For the longest time, dual decks had a kind of built-in validity, and that was based on the fact that they were the only sealed product, well, almost the only sealed product, that could be bought and then just right out of the box played with a friend. Because of this, lackluster dual decks were often defended by customers who wanted to just pick up a product to play against their friend casually, or to use as a teaching tool for a prospective new player. And though I ultimately disagreed with their usefulness at this at times, I would grant that those claims had a certain amount of validity to them. After all, my preferred method of six booster packs per player to build your own sealed deck with is always going to be much costlier than a dual deck, and so even those dual decks of the past with little to no financial value or standard parts for constructed, they still had a kind of baseline validity, a baseline justification, because it was player against player. But no more. Why? because dual decks are now to be held up in comparison to Clash Packs, as this is a product for the same price with two pre-constructed decks meant to be played against each other. And while, of course, each dual deck is different and each Clash Pack is different, the recent Clash Packs have been a good value, especially the most recent one. And so purchasing that, you have the ability to play those decks against each other, but you also get so much more bang for your buck. You get the collectible cards, you get the individual pieces of value, you get the ability to combine those decks into a tournament-worthy, or at least starting tournament-worthy, deck. And so a Clash Pack ends up being the better buy, and the dual deck just gets left in the dust. And with sample packs having recently been upgraded to no longer just being a single sample deck, but rather two small sample decks for brand new players to pick up and have something to play against their friend with, well, the old excuse of a dual deck is great for teaching a new player is less and less valid as well. These are better for new players and they're free. Final conclusion? Zendikar vs. Eldrazi fails to offer much, if anything, in terms of financial value, needed reprints, or even just cards for collectors. The decks also appear to be slightly off balance when played against each other, with the Eldrazi deck dominating. For new and casual players, or just players looking to buy a few pre-constructed decks to play against each other, the most recent Clash Pack is a far better use of your cash instead. It costs a little more, but unlike Zendikar vs. Eldrazi, it is worth it. Whereas this product is not. Grade? D+. But what about you? What grade would you have given Zendikar vs. Eldrazi, and why? Also, do you think dual decks might need to be revamped? Or are you very happy with this product and don't feel it's in need of improvement? Let me know in the comments below. I hope this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to subscribe, like, share, or even just by leaving a comment. And this video has been brought to you by the generous support of patron alums at Patreon, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you.